So I've got my hands on something this weekend that I've been wanting to test out for a while. The Steam Deck by Valve. This thing came out earlier this year, but it's hard to get your hands on one as there's a waiting list. Well, I was lucky enough to find one to borrow and I wanted to provide my opinion on it coming from a console gamer. See, I've never really been into PC games. I don't own a PC, I'm a Mac user, which as most gamers know, isn't exactly the gaming console of choice. Most big titles of PC games aren't available on the Mac, but I do like to play games on consoles. I'm not a hardcore gamer by any means, but I have a couple of consoles being the PS5 and the Nintendo Switch. I play games like Destiny, Call of Duty, Rocket League, NHL, and so on. I also play a lot of games with my son, like any of the Mario games or Minecraft. Why do people like gaming consoles? It's because of the fun and simplicity. Gaming consoles have many advantages as opposed to gaming on a computer. One of the main ones is the ease of use. It's easier for a child or someone who is not very technologically oriented to understand how to play games on a console than it is for them to figure out how to play on a computer. Take the Nintendo Switch, for example, which I instantly want to compare to the Steam Deck because, well, you know, they kind of look similar. The Switch allows you to play games from game cards or digital downloads from the Nintendo online store. Every game is compatible with your console. You don't have to worry about whether you have the right processor, GPU, software, or firmware to make it the best playing experience. That makes it super approachable for kids, parents, and everyone in between. Enter the Steam Deck by Valve. This is one of the first ever PCs in the form of a handheld gaming console. This is the first time Valve is entering into hardware development. The Steam Deck may look like a Nintendo Switch at first glance, but the similarities end pretty quickly. Valve has built their own Linux-based OS called SteamOS, which powers this thing. Because it's a PC, you can also install Windows if you want to play an even wider array of games from other sources than the Steam Store. Like a Nintendo Switch, the deck can be plugged into a TV, but like a computer, it can be plugged into a monitor and used with a mouse and keyboard. There's an available dock, which makes that process even easier. In many ways, this seems like a really versatile machine, geared for gaming, and in a sense, it makes PC gaming a bit more approachable. But is it right for someone who's coming from the world of console gaming, or for the parents who wanna buy their kids a game console? Let's dig in. Comparing the Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck isn't that fair, and it's not super useful, but it's good for context. The Nintendo Switch is kind of older hardware at this point since it's been around for several years. Plus it was never intended to compete with high level gaming PCs. The Nintendo Switch runs on an Nvidia Tegra X1 system on a chip running at 1.02 gigahertz with a total of four gigabytes of RAM. It's got an Nvidia Maxwell based GPU, which clocks it up to 768 megahertz and its storage is either 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes with the option to expand with a micro SD card up to two terabytes. The Steam Deck uses a custom AMD accelerated processing unit, which runs between 2.4 and 3.5 gigahertz with a total of 16 gigabytes of RAM. Its GPU runs between one to 1.6 gigahertz and the deck can be ordered with 64, 256 or 512 gigabytes of storage. And it also has a micro SD card slot for storage expansion. Basically the Steam Deck is better in almost every technical way except for the screen, which you could argue is better on the Switch if you prefer OLED displays. The Switch display is 1280 by 720 versus the Steam Deck at 1280 by 800. The main difference is the OLED technology and the Switch allows for blacker blacks and richer contrast overall. Both displays are seven inch diagonal and both are touchscreen. Then there's the size of the units themselves. The Switch OLED model is four by 9.5 by 0.5 inches, whereas the the Steam Deck is significantly larger at 4 by 10.5 by 2 inches. Volumetrically, the Steam Deck is more than double the size of the Nintendo Switch. And the price is not close either. The Switch runs for between $380 and $450 depending on if you get the standard model or the OLED model. 
and the Steam Deck has three different models ranging from $500 to $820. As I mentioned before, Valve has created their own custom operating system here. The experience is pretty easy from the get-go. Simply sign in with your Steam account, which is free to join. Many PC players will already have a Steam account, and they'll find that all of their games from their Steam library are available to download. Here's where the super easy experience diverges a little bit. See, you can't play all of your Steam games that you might play on a PC. Well, I think technically you are able to download them and run them, but not all of them will work right. That's because this is a new form factor for a PC and it's running its own custom OS. So some games aren't technically compatible. For example, some games don't have controller support, which is kind of important considering what you're playing on. The game needs to have support for the compatibility layer Steam uses to play these Windows games on Linux as well. Some games have a greater degree of support than others. Not to worry too much though, because Valve has now tested and verified 5,000 plus games. And of course, there's still plenty of popular games that are confirmed to be unsupported at this time. Destiny 2, Fall Guys, and PUBG to name a few. This is because of the anti-cheat software these games employ. It doesn't work on the custom Steam OS. This might change in the future, but for now, you should definitely check to see if your favorite games are deck verified. The games that are verified definitely work well though. And the experience from browsing the store to downloading and installing is all seamless. There's a handy verified badge on all compatible games. And just like on a console, you can buy and download the game right there. During my time with the deck, I was able to download and play several games, including Rocket League, A Hat in Time, Tricky Towers. And I also tried Desk Job. Steam's short tech demo game, which is fun and quirky, but also gives you a sense of all that the Steam Deck can do, including the motion controls. For the most part, the games I played were buttery smooth and I didn't require any tweaking or optimization or playing with the settings. That lends credence to the idea that the Steam Deck can feel more like a console. It's going for that plug and play feeling and it works pretty well as long as you stick to the verified games. The device, although bigger and heavier than the Switch, is still comfortable to game with for hours. The one difference is it does have a built-in fan and it will get kind of warm if you're putting it through its paces. Randomly, I found myself hitting the back buttons, which are R4, R5, L4, L5, by accident when I was playing certain games. I didn't actually play a game in which I needed those buttons, but they were mapped in some cases to actions I could do with other buttons. For example, I kept toggling the ball cam on and off accidentally while playing Rocket League, which caused a few problems, not to mention being mildly annoying. But I get that some gamers want as many customizable buttons as possible. So I think that we've established that the Steam Deck is pretty cool. I have to give Valve a lot of credit here for thinking creatively and coming up with a brand new form factor. For one thing, you're getting a pretty decent gaming PC in a cool form factor for a pretty decent price. I mean, $500 to $800, while expensive, is relatively affordable when compared to modern gaming PCs. This brings PC gaming to a budget level without sacrificing too much on performance. But there is still a sacrifice. PC gamers will find that while the hardware is decent for the price, the graphics performance is roughly in line with mid-range GPUs that were shipping about five years ago. So this isn't anything groundbreaking. If you want 4K resolution, ray tracing, and consistently high frame rates, the Steam Deck won't deliver. But in the world of portable gaming, the Steam Deck is way more portable than even a gaming laptop. You can slip this into a small backpack or even a purse. You don't need a big laptop bag and a bunch of peripherals. But on the other hand, because of the limited compatibility, you get access to a smaller game library than if you did have a laptop. Lastly, both good and bad in my opinion, you can use this as a computer. Not only can you dock it and hook it up to a monitor, but even on its own, there's a desktop mode you can access. There's a web browser, which is Firefox, to serve a lot of your regular computing needs. But you can also install Windows if you want to run all kinds of Windows apps. This is super cool and it's great for those who want to tinker and install different things and generally play with the infinite customizability of having an actual PC. But there's a risk that you might make things a bit too complicated for the user who just wants to see seamless, always works kind of experience. So here's the bottom line. This falls somewhere in between a gaming console and a computer. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite do either of those things as well as its counterparts. It's not gonna be the top end PC or have the breadth of available titles. It's also not gonna provide the pure plug and play experience of a gaming console. 
I think Valve is working really hard on this problem with its deck verified program, but there's still going to be headaches here and there for users who want that seamless experience. What this means is that if you're in the market for a game console, you should get a game console. And this doesn't quite meet those standards, in my opinion. If you're in the market for a gaming PC, you should get a gaming PC. And again, this doesn't quite hit the mark. But none of that really matters because this is actually best for the person who already has a gaming PC. Yes, this is basically just meant to be a second portable gaming solution for PC owners, especially if their favorite games are deck verified because they can pick up where they left off from playing on their computer and move on over to the Steam Deck and vice versa. Or perhaps they will play different types of games on their gaming PC than on their Steam Deck. Really the point is that they have access to their Steam library in multiple places. They have a great portable system and they don't mind potentially dealing with the tinkering and optimizing that's sometimes comes with a PC. And I gotta tell you, Steam Deck really delivers on that value. As a pretty casual console gamer, it's not for me, but I am very impressed with it. What do you think? Do you have a Steam Deck or do you have one reserved? Where do you think the Steam Deck really nails it? And where does Valve miss the mark? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, click that like button as it helps other people find it who might wanna hear about the Steam Deck from a different perspective. And if you like tech, gaming, or software and service reviews, click subscribe. I've always got something new in the works and I upload new content all the time. Thanks so much and we'll see you in the next one.